What's up ACCA students? In this video, I'm going to share with you a superpower that will help you get a pass on any of the applied skills exams. Those are the exams with multiple choice, fill in the blank, objective test questions. In this video, I'll show you examples from the performance management exam, but you could apply these tips to any of the applied skills exams. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, and please give this video a like if you find it helpful. All right, let's jump in. Imagine we are in the exam, we're in section A, we press next, and we are faced with this beast of a question, a really difficult one. I'm looking at it. Why is it difficult? Well, I can see right off the bat, it's about variances, a difficult topic. The information is presented as sentences, not as a table. So we've got to read all of this and there's a lot of information to pick out of here. It's just a lot to read, a lot to digest. So if your first inclination is to hit the flag button and to come back to this one after you've cleared through the easy ones in section A, I would respect that. But let's do it together. Why don't you pause the video Give this a try, and then I'll show you the superpower that I will employ to make quick work of this question. Welcome back. This superpower only works if you are in the right state of mind. You have to be in a curious, inquisitive, focused state of mind. You cannot be panicked. If you have the fight or flight mechanism in play, there's no way you can do a question like this. So I'll show you what I do. Instead of engaging in this difficult looking paragraph, first I'm gonna step back and have a look at the answers. What's going on here? It's about variances. It's about a mix variance and the yield, the two that go together, mix and yield. Now I make an observation. There are no numbers in the answers. Even though the model answer takes you through the full calculation of this, which would take a lot of time, I'm gonna show you a shortcut. And this is based on stepping back and just viewing the question in its entirety before you give it a go. And I see they only want the interpretation. Are the variances adverse or favorable? So before I dig in, I'm gonna visualize what this is all about. I'm gonna remember that the mix variance is only about the ratio of the inputs. We've got A to B. Did we follow the recipe in relative terms? Did we put the right percentage of A to B into the process and we have to evaluate which one is the cheap ingredient which one is the more expensive so if we were making smoothies the expensive ingredient would be the fruit juice the cheap ingredient would be the water and the ice did we follow the recipe then the yield variance very similar to the usage variance. Now, this is about the output to the input. Pardon my artwork, you guys. We put in the ingredients. Did we get out the expected finished product? Did the inputs yield the expected output? So now that I visualized it, Let's see if we can do this from a theoretical point of view. And I read the story and I see to produce 19 liters of X, we put in eight of A, 12 of B. 
So the superpower here, be curious, visualize things, sketch things out. How much do we put in? We put in 8A, 12B. What do we get out? 19. So there's a bit of a normal loss happening there because we're putting in a total of 20. A is $20 a liter. B is 25. So now we've identified A is the cheap stuff. B is the more expensive ingredient. During September, the actual results showed that 18.50 liters of X were produced using a total input 900 A, 1100 and B, 1100 liters of B. Let's look at that standard mix again, 8 to 12. Let's look at the actual mix, 900 to 1100. Now we can just knock the zeros off. Whoa, look at that. We can see they didn't follow the recipe. They put in more A, less B. They used more of the, ex of the cheap stuff. So the mix variance has to be favorable. So it's going to be this one or this one. That goes out, that goes out. We said that 20 goes in, 19 units come out. How much did we actually put in? We put in 900 and 1100, so we put in 2000. Did we get 1900? Did we get 1900? No, we only got 1850. So the process was less efficient. There was more waste or loss. So the answer is here. Mix variance favorable, yield variance adverse. So guys, with a curious, inquisitive state of mind, I stepped back, I looked at the answers, I thought about the theory, I visualized it, then I went in and I solved the problem without even using my calculator. calculator. Moving on, here is our next question. You press next in the exam. Oh no, another beast. Look at all this information you have to read. So if again, if your first impression is to flag this and to keep looking for easier things to exploit, I would respect that. I would do the same. Pause the video here. Give this a try on your own. Then we'll do it together. We'll use the same superpower that we used in the previous question. Okay, guys, welcome back. My approach, always read this. We've got to know what we're looking for. We're about to go into a supermarket, which is the story. We need a shopping list. So we find the shopping list from the requirement. What information are we looking for? And I see the words objective function and constraint statement. Only place we see this is in multiple limiting factors, linear programming. Then I see this, material constraint, labor constraint. That means we don't have enough of something to do everything that we want to do. I don't have enough. And right away I'm looking here and the right answer just well well two of them jump out at me as feasible two jump out at at me as incorrect do you see it also guys the sign everything here is the same except for the sign of the operator there A constraint means we don't have enough. It's got to be less than or equal to. Can't be greater than or equal to. So the greater than or equal to goes out. Now, I'm down to two options. 
and it's got to be 60x or 15y. Don't even need to look at that, right? 60 or 15. And, oh, the answer is apparent again because I start reading here. Well, we know the objective, guys, is to maximize profit. And we maximize profit by maximizing contribution in the context of these short-term decisions fixed costs don't change so we keep them out of the equation we're just worried about contribution and I start reading and I see that 60 is the selling price of an X and I don't want a selling price I want contribution so guys, by elimination, by reading the answers before I dive in, I eliminate things and I can even find the right answer if I'm lucky. Now we can check that, can't we? Because 60 minus the variable cost of 45 is 15. So that's the contribution. Once again, we use the same approach. I avoided a panicked state of mind. I stepped back. I read the requirement. I looked at the answers. Is there a clue in the answers? Can I eliminate things before I even go shopping? Can I even get to the right answer? Moving on to my last example. This might look familiar because I used the same question in my previous video when I taught the approach for learning curve. But now that you know the approach, I want to show you a cool shortcut, a cool trick, a cool superpower. So pause the video, try this one on your own. When you're ready, roll the video. We'll do it together. Welcome back. We are looking at learning curve. And before I do anything, I read this. And I see we have the classic. How long does it take to complete one of the units? What's the time for unit number X? You probably remember the exam technique. I'm going to get the total time for 6. And if I subtract from that, the total time for 5, I get the time for unit number 6, the difference. Now, let me think about this for a minute before I start. I can make a little graph here. And if I put the unit on the X and we put the time per unit on the Y axis as you know the time per unit drops due to familiarity but it doesn't drop forever eventually it reaches a steady state doesn't it so with this information oh wow a light bulb pops over my head let's read the story we got a company making mobile phones, learning curve, 75% learning rate, first 15. A new engineer just did his first job in five hours. And at a learning rate of 75%, the learning factor is negative 0.415. So let me do this. The average time when we do six units. Okay, so I'm going to use that formula. The average time, that's going to be that y is equal to ax to the power of b. We've got the a, which is 5. We've got the x, which is 6 to the power of negative 0 0.415. Let me put that into my calculator. And y is equal to 
2.377. That is the average time when we do six. Now look at this. It's not going to be five. It's going to be lower, isn't it? Now the average time when we do six is this one. We don't want the average time. We want the time of number six. So it's not that one. It's got to be less than the average, right? The average time for six would be add up all of those and divide by six. But unit number six is going to be the smallest. It's not going to be bigger. It's going to be smaller. So by elimination, I get to answer B. Again, I use that superpower of staying cool, looking at everything from a big picture, taking a helicopter view of this question, not jumping in in a panicked state of mind and calculating things in a rush. When you're in a rushed, panicked state of mind, you're moving too fast, you're moving inaccurately, you do the work, and then you're, oh my goodness, my answer's not in the list. But if you stay calm, if you stay cool, if you stay curious, if you stay focused, you can get a pass on paper PM. Guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like more, please subscribe. I've got more PM resources on my webpage. You can see that in the description. Guys, good luck on your upcoming ACCA exam.